In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us to stay, he can stay there. Sometime later, Elisha arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Elisha asked, can something be done for her? His servant, Gehazi, answered, yes, she has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple. Amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord sent his apostles and his disciples out two by two to proclaim the message of salvation, to be the face of God in the world. And those messengers are still sent out today But who would welcome them? Who would listen to them? Today, as we know, there are massive uh, cultural shifts happening or attempting to happen. We see a rise in socialist utopianism, radical individualism, and personal entitlement. We see the rise of diversity elitism, while at the same time and from the same folks, a rise of judgmentalism toward those who don't conform. There's the rise of both nationalism and anti-nationalism. We see major declines in critical thinking. And with that, we see a rise in disinformation, not misinformation, but disinformation, the deliberate feeding of false information to unthinking masses. And that's both despicable and dangerous. We've seen the rise of a spirit of umbrage, uh, the tendency to bristle easily and to actively seek to be offended. We see and hear the deplorable act of race baiting, creating racial tensions artificially for the sake of political gain. There's been the rise of ahistoricism, that is, uh, denying that there was any meaningful history before the day I was born. And that stands in contrast to historical revisionism, 
which has also uh, seen a rise lately, where people today rewrite history or attempt to tear it down or erase it completely. And of course, all this is entirely anti-Christian. The Lord sent his apostles and his disciples out two by two to proclaim the message of salvation, to be the voice of God in the world. And those messengers are still sent out today into the world. But in the face of our present day cultural storms, who would welcome them? Who would listen? When you think about the plumbing in your house, uh, you could take the kitchen faucet, for example. It's basically, as we know, a pipe that carries water from the supply or the well to the faucet. Well, plumbing is a conduit uh, for water to get from point A to point B. We all know that. Well, in terms of faith, faith and the gospel message are like the water. Culture is like the pipe. And points A and points, point B is like God in the world. If the culture is in decent shape, if the pipe's in decent shape, then God's grace and faith and uh, evangelization can all flow. But sometimes the culture gets clogged and then nothing flows. It certainly seems that uh, this is where we are today. Our culture is clogged by everything that could possibly clog it. Greed and lust for power and control, manipulation of popular sentiments, oversensitivity, egocentrism, judgmentalism, other hairballs and overgrown roots and cracks that keep the grace of God from flowing through it. And so, again, the Lord sent his messengers into the world today. But who would listen? Who would welcome them? Our culture is shifting to a place of being precariously clogged, unable to let God's grace flow through it. And we know the danger that comes with a pipe that refuses to get unclogged. It explodes, more or less. It explodes and caves in on itself. Now, this isn't a reason to be fearful or hopeless, but it is a reason to consider how important the Catholic faith is to the present and to the future of our culture. You know, the opposite of power and control is humility and cooperation. The opposite of manipulation and disinformation is honesty, encouragement, and integrity. The opposite of self-centeredness is other-centered charity. The opposite of judgmentalism is kindness and compassion. The opposite of race baiting and conformity is true appreciation of all that God has created. The opposite of agendas and biases is selflessness. In short, if ever there was a Drano or a liquid plumber or a snake strong enough to get through our cultural clog today, it is true Christian living. But when the plumbing becomes so clogged, when it becomes so clogged, what else is there but to make a bypass so that God's grace and salvation can still flow from God to those who need it? And so not only is the Christian message so vitally important today, but so too is the local faith community. Those little bands of brothers and sisters in Christ are the bypasses. It might be the parish, not just any parish, but a parish which uh, is intentionally committed to Catholic living. It might be the family, the domestic church. It might be two Christian friends who hold each other accountable to the, to the demands of their faith. It might be an educational environment where the faith can be expressed freely. There are any number of these small communities of faith, uh, faith that work in the world. And they're vitally important to unclogging the culture because those little communities are what bypass the blockage. The Lord sends his messengers into the world today, but who would welcome them? Who would listen to the message of salvation and the Lord's teachings of hum about humility and cooperation, honesty, encouragement of others, integrity, other-centered love, kindness and compassion and true appreciation of all that God has created? Who would listen? Well, we would. We would. There is hope. It's as Jesus says, you are the light of the world. 
And so we pray that God will help us to be unclogged in mind and heart, to keep the flame of faith alive in our hearts as a remedy for what ails our culture and as a cause for a peace within us who try to fight the good fight in the parish, at school, at home, at work, among friends, and within ourselves. And my brothers and sisters, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Once again, Uh, relying on the goodness and the providence of our God, we offer to him our prayers. That the church remains singular in her allegiance to Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations seek the way of peace together, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as disciples of Christ, we may seek the reign of God before all else. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may heed the voice of the prophets in our midst. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who minister in soup kitchens and social service agencies may give witness to Christ with all they meet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people of faith, who fight to preserve religious liberty, may the Lord strengthen their resolve to hold firm in their witness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, and especially for the seminarians in our diocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the monthly intentions of Pope Francis and Bishop Ricken, and for the prayers written in our book, parish books of prayer, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithfully departed, and especially for the family and friends of St. Clair Parish, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we bring you these prayers today spoken and also all the prayers that we hold in our hearts from wherever we worship today. We ask you to receive them, and in your kindness, answer them, as always, according to your goodwill. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplish the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Clare, our patroness, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice, which we have offered and received, fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.